Okay, this is going to be a quick video on checking continuity on a breadboard. There's plenty of videos out there on breadboards, but I wanted to explain the different connections on this board by using a meter. So I'm using what's called a continuity check, and a lot of meters have uh, what looks to be like almost like a speaker output. And when you have the meter's leads touched together, you should get a tone. The tone is telling you that you have a complete path from one meter lead through some kind of conductor, some path, back to the other meter lead. That's why when you touch them both together, that tones. So I have one meter lead right here connected to a green alligator clip. The other end of that alligator clip is connected to a small jumper, and that is plugged into the positive bus on this breadboard. The other meter lead is connected to a white uh, alligator clip. The other end of that lead is tied to another jumper. So if I touch the green uh, alligator clip, it should tone. Okay, so it's telling me I have a complete path. And if I plug this jumper into this bus, you can see it's proving that I have a path all the way down. And I could plug in anywhere on that positive bus and get a tone. So if you ever want to know, are these points connected, you could use a continuity check. Now I'm going to come over to this positive bus, and you'll notice with it plugged in, I don't get a tone. That's because those two buses, even though they're labeled positive, they're not tied together. Now I have another jumper plugged in, plugged into the positive bus, and I'm jumpering over to this positive bus. And when I make that connection, we get a tone. Now, unless you're dealing with different voltages, for instance, on these two buses, you might have, let's say, 12 volts, and on these two buses, you might have 5 volts. Unless you're doing something like that, it's best to just tie your negative buses together and your positive buses together. So when you're building your circuit, you could tap in to positive or negative either side and get some, you know, get your supply voltage to your circuit. Now I have four resistors, four loads. I have no idea what their values are, but my task is going to be to build a series circuit with these four loads in this breadboard. Well, my first step should be, once I've verified that my buses are tied together, I should check some resistance values on these and verify that they're good. Now, a lot of instructors will make you figure out the tolerance band. And what I just tell all my students is if you're close, that is good enough. So here's how I test my loads before I put them in a circuit. Now this is what I do before I even start building a circuit is make sure these loads are good. Now if you put your loads in the breadboard this way, they are not connected to each other. This leg is in a bus separate of this leg. Now, if you were to tie your resistor in like this, we now have a direct short across this load. Both legs are tied into the same bus, and the resistance is pretty close to zero because current's going to take the easiest path, which is through the bus and not through the load. So you never want to put in loads like that on the same bus. So now we have all these loads in place, and they're not tied to each other, and they're not shorted. What this allows me to do is place my meter right across each leg and measure the resistance of each load. So I'm using alligator clips that I've tested. I knew they were good. I have one on either side of the load, and the other side of the alligators are tied to my meter leads. My meter is set to read ohms, and you see I read 561. Well, I would document that, 561, as my first resistor, R1. And I'd measure all the rest of them and document 
And keep in mind that this is going to be R1, R2, R3, R4, etc. Okay, now I've measured all the loads and I have my circuit drawn out. And here's R1 through R4 and each measured load and resistance. Now, I have not placed the voltage applied to this circuit yet. I just have the positive bus and the negative bus. Now, after I build this circuit on this board, I would like to be able to verify that I have this circuit built correctly. And there's a couple ways to do that. The first way is using a highlighter to highlight each connection as you make those connections. The second way is to read the total resistance of the circuit when you're done to verify that you have pretty close to your calculated total resistance. So if we take a good look at the drawing, we could see that from the positive bus, we connect to one leg of R1. And you can see here that I've placed one leg of R1 right into the positive bus. Now because I have my buses tied together, that means I could technically place on anywhere on this bus or on this side on the positive bus. And I've still landed one leg to positive as seen. Now as soon as I make that connection, then I highlight my drawing. That tells me that I have made that connection. Now even though I've landed the other leg to a point on the breadboard, it's not tied to anything. It's just in one bus right now. So I do not highlight this other connection yet until these two points are tied together. I've now landed one leg of R2 in the same bus, the same connection point as that leg from R1. I can now highlight this point on my drawing. That shows me that I've connected those two points. Even though I've landed one leg of that R2 into a bus, it is not connected to anything yet. So I don't highlight my drawing yet. I have now landed one leg of R3 in the same bus point right here. So I've connected those two resistors together. I now go to my drawing and I highlight those two points. Now once again, even though one leg of R3 is in a bus, it's not connected to anything yet. I've now connected one leg of R4 in the same bus with R3. I can now highlight that connection point and I can clearly see from the drawing what's left. The other leg of R4 has to go to the negative bus. Because I have all my my negative buses tied together and my positives tied together, I can land anywhere on the negative bus on either side of the board. I've decided to take the closest one and I've landed it there. So now I can highlight that connection. Now the drawing says that I've wired it correctly, but I want to verify that I have this circuit correct. So here's how we check that. So now if you look at the drawing, you can see that I've put in my ohm meter directly across the buses. So if I've done this correctly, I should see the total resistance of this circuit. Well, to figure out total resistance, you just add up all your loads to get your total. So my calculated is 1560, and my meter is reading 1549. It's hard to see. And I am across the negative bus here and the positive bus here. I'm just using these two jumpers from my alligator clips. Now I could have ch chose to put it in any negative bus and every any uh, positive bus and still seen the total resistance. This tells me that I have the circuit put together correctly. Now, a nice thing about the meters in the lab is they have a built-in power supply. I can choose between 3 volts and 12 volts to come out of my positive and negative port whenever I flip this switch on. On this side is a whole separate circuit. It's a separate meter 
and I'm currently set up to read voltage. Right now it says zero volts. So if I flip the switch on and I place my meter in the proper ports, I should see close to six volts, and I do, 5.99 volts. And I want to apply this voltage now to the circuit that we've built. So we leave our alligators connected to the jumpers that are in the buses, the positive and negative, which we took our resistance reading on just a moment ago. And we move those leads over from the ends of these test leads over to our power supply. The power supply is on. We read voltage a moment ago, so we know we should be having a voltage applied to the circuit. The best way to check it is to maybe make another couple of jumpers and put them right in the positive and negative bus and observe that voltage. Another way to check is to take a voltage reading directly across any one of these loads. Now that should be less than the supply voltage. That should tell you that you have current flow through this circuit and that you have voltage applied to the main buses.